It's hard to imagine Corinth, Mississippi without Borum's Drugstore. It's been at the same location since right after the Civil War. Still owned by the same family, for the last 65 years, Camille Borum Mitchell has filled prescriptions and guided the business. Camille's an American original, and we hope you enjoy listening to her as much as we did. Loretta Camille Bora Mitchell is my full name, but I just go by Camille Bora Mitchell. <laughs> and obviously we're in Corinth, Mississippi. Yes, that's correct. Did I say it properly? But yes, you did. <laughs> you are one of the most prominent families in the town. Well, we helped the town grow. <laughs> yeah, that's what I understand, and also one of, if not the oldest business in town. It's the, it's the oldest building, it's the oldest business in town as far as I know. It's the oldest drugstore in the state of Mississippi. And according to the young pharmacy students that came down from Boston, they say that we're the oldest drugstore in the United States still operated by the same family. When our particular family came to this area, it was in 1843. Uh, they left uh, South Carolina going to Texas. My great-grandmother uh, discovered that she was expecting a new baby, so they waited to go in the spring. And uh, you know how they did, they divided the caravans up into smaller groups. And uh, they were attacked by a warring band of Indians as they crossed Alabama. Mm -hmm. And uh, she was partially scalped and the majority of the people were killed. And the tribe of Indians from South Mississippi, where Oxford is today, Ole Miss, they uh, passed by and picked them up and took them back to their camping grounds. And they put Miss Borum's scalp back on using yellow root and prickly M. Yellow root, you know it today as uh, fibromycin, tetracycline. It wasn't until around 1950 that we got to using the tetracyclines. And then after uh, the war was over, the Civil War was over with, uh, Dr. Borum was going back to his home in Oxford and he ran into Dr. Young who had been uh, in a battle with him in New Orleans. They were served in the medical field. And so he talked him into uh, coming back to Corinth instead of opening up his practice in Oxford. He said that uh, Corinth was going to grow a lot more <laughs> <laughs> because of the railroads. And uh, so it really did prosper. It did very well. Okay. And uh, so that, that is how our particular family got here. And when did they go into the pharmacy business? Well, he went into the pharmacy business almost immediately because Corinth was under military rule. Mm -hmm. And that was the reason Dr. Young was so interested in him staying, because uh, he had studied under other pharmacists and he was uh, able to make drugs as well as uh, dispense them. Okay. So the drugstore was first wholesale retail. Mm -hmm. So they made the, the drugs up above the drugstore that you saw today. And uh, doctor's offices were downstairs. It's at the, it was at the same location? The same today. location. And and, uh, about what year was that? Uh, you know, uh, it would have to have been 1863. Okay. Well, anyway, and they built up, the first courthouse was a frame building, and then the second courthouse was a red brick building. And I assume it's when they built that second one that he decided to put the doctor's offices upstairs and move the drugstore downstairs. Better for business. <laughs> <laughs> more retail. Uh, yeah, more retail. And uh, uh, the statue out here used to sit in the middle of the street. The story is that uh, uh, Mr. Rubel had a clothing store. He had a magnificent building. And uh, they said that uh, Ms. Rubel got a car and that she kept hitting the statue, so they just moved the statue. <laughs> I think it's true. <laughs> My grandfather was a doctor. Okay. And he operated the store and had his office upstairs. And had a medical practice yes. here. Okay. And he had his brother Theodore. All right. Now Theodore studied at John Hopkins. Okay. And my grandfather always said he was a little smarter than he was. <laughs> he went to UT or University of Tennessee. Okay. And uh, but Theodore, and so they had their practice here. Uh, a thriving business back in the day. Well, I imagine it was. I really do. Okay. What's your earliest recollection of the pharmacy? My early recollection. Well. <laughs> I asked my grandfather for a job. I must have been about 
10, probably 11. I always liked the drugstore. So he gave me a job of washing dishes behind the soda fountain. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want that job, but I didn't complain. So later, I got all of a nickel a week for working two minutes a day. <laughs> then he, I asked him one day if I could have a better job. And he says, well, what's wrong with the one you've got? And I told him I thought I was a little smarter than that. <laughs> so he gave me the job with the cash register. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and so I worked there several months, and I guess so. And then he gave me, he came over one day, and he says, I've got just the job for you. And I thought, oh, I'm just delighted. What is it? Went back to the pharmacy, and that's where I wanted to go. And I got to feel Dr. Stroops, who was a veterinarian here, Actually, he was probably the only veterinarian for several counties. Aloe powders for the cows. And it's a very volatile powder that gets up in your nose and your mouth. But that didn't bother me. I was getting to measure something and fold the powder papers. I just thought that was fantastic. About six months later, I discovered nobody else wanted that job. <laughs> what school did you go to? I went to the University of Mississippi. Well, what elementary school? Where did you go to oh, school? What elementary? Here? I went to Carth Elementary School. Oh, Carth Elementary. And Okay. And uh, we only had two schools. We had a uh, Crew Street School, which had the first, well, really had kindergarten through the fourth grade. And then we had the school on the hill, is what we called it, where the post office is today, the high point. Okay. Well, that was for the fifth and sixth graders. And then the, where the post office actually sits today was seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh, and twelfth. Off you went to Ole Miss become a pharmacist. Yes, uh-huh. Okay. I, I think that it's kind of funny about that. Uh, my grandfather and my grandmother both tell me just whatever you want to do, and you want to do it, just because somebody else wasn't doing it, was no reason not to. And uh, uh, and my grandfather added, if you had to hide your face, you were doing the wrong thing. <laughs> and so when I went down to Ole Miss, I never occurred to me that they didn't have girls in in pharmacy school, and I thought that was kind of odd, taking the time frame in consideration. Sure. That would be 1944 when I went down there. Were you the only woman? Studying? I was the only one there for a while, and then Paula Hammond came in from Hammond, Louisiana. Okay. And then several others came after that. So obviously you were pretty focused on the family business from Well, the I just liked it. Okay. Uh, uh, I've always uh, liked chemistry and math, and that worked in perfectly. When, when did you begin really working here? Probably 48. Uh, well, really and truly, I guess I really began in 48. It was later after the, the chain started developing. I thought it would be a good idea to see how that was. Okay. So I worked for the chains part-time, not full-time. Okay. I just worked as a relief pharmacist. And Bor Borums was at its present location then? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's so, never moved. Incidentally, that used to be a saddlery. And the building next to us was a tin shop, and the building on the other side was a livery stable. <laughs> uh, Carnival was a real busy town uh, before World War II and during World War II. And then when Urban Renewal came in, it just destroyed the downtowns. So they went more to the shopping areas or shopping malls, mm -hmm. and it took all the businesses away. So it was uh, very slim there for a while. I laughingly said it wasn't anybody but the lawyers and the jewelry store and us and the courthouse left downtown. <laughs> but uh, mm -hmm. uh, it's, uh, it's come back. Uh, we decided to go back into time. And uh, we think that with what we think we are, we think we'd appear in the 50s and 60s. That was when everything was so good for the United States. The war was over. Everybody was working. Everything was made in the USA. It's hard for the people of day to realize that. And the people sent their children to college without having to depend upon the government or somebody to help them. You know, more so independent. So that was basically a business decision to sort of go retro. That's right, it really was. When did you do that? Uh, well, that was, uh, it was in the 80s. Okay. Uh, when we uh, had that, uh, when I had that bright idea, I got amused at my youngest son, he's a contractor, and I asked him, it would be a big job putting the old front back, because we had an ultra-modern front. And he says no, and 
he listened to my idea and he says, you know what people are going to think, don't you? I says, yes, they're going to think i got bats in the belfry. <laughs> 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 and so we debated about moving out by the hospital, but uh, I just couldn't seem to bring myself to do it. Another thing that happened that helped tremendously was Jimmy and Betty Hathcock thought up the idea of having a slug burger fest. That was after we put the front, the old front back on the store. And, uh, of course, the slug burger back during the Depression was like three for a nickel, but impossible to believe. And the men called it a slug, like a slug you might put in a parking meter. Right. And uh, so we, everybody in town thought that'd be a fantastic idea, so we had the slug burger downtown. And, of course, that brought people back downtown. See, they had gotten used to going out, and they kind of forgot about us. Mm -hmm. And so ever since then, we had several things that really worked out well. The Slug Burger Fest has worked out well, and then we have the Hog Wild and several other things, the Green Market. Most of the town, I believe, that can be restored has been restored. Seems to be still a great deal going on. Mm -hmm. um, they're, still, they're still working on a law office up there on the corner. Now, he was fortunate enough to, to still have his original columns. The rest of us had to have them made. <laughs> <laughs> New York columns. Uh, and all the columns were cast then in those, that time frame. So, where did the slug burger come from? Well, it was just a cheap way to make food, I guess you would say. The way I understood it was Ms. Weeks, and I feel sure there was lots of other people, I just don't know their names. But she came up with this idea of mixing potato flour and a little bit of sausage and a little bit of ground beef, which were extenders as we call them today. Mm -hmm. And uh, she could sell them, you know, so cheap. And they're good, and they're different. Uh -huh. But I admit, not everybody likes a slug burger, but most people do. They're crisp, you deep fry them. Store always have a lunch counter. It's been there as far as I can remember since uh, early 1900s. Okay. But it was much smaller than mm -hmm. that one that's there today. It seems uh, food is a big part of the store. Yes, it, it really is. Uh, actually, uh, we used the, the whole idea ordinarily in the past was to use the soda fountain to draw trade, which it does, mm -hmm. and. Uh, we didn't realize uh, how, how well it was going to do till after we got into our renovation over there. Uh -huh. And uh, we didn't have it. We, it was, uh, we first bought that particular fountain from Swift. Okay. And when Howard Johnson uh, uh, pulled, well, pulled out the ice cream business and Swift pulled out. I ask a question. Why are your milkshakes so good? Because they're made with real milk and real ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> and they're not made with blenders, they're made with a, a regular milkshake. I hadn't seen one of those in a long time. Little long. Somebody said they really enjoyed it. This guy came in today and he told his wife, he says, I don't think we need but one, we'll split it. But as it worked out, they got two, so <laughs> he didn't want to split it. <laughs> and but they are good. They are, I, I think that's the main thing, is they're made with the natural uh, syrups and uh, and. Uh, ice cream and, and milk. If you're wanting to be on a diet, we're not the place to come. <laughs> I'll remember that. And uh, But we do have salads. <laughs> and, and your Coca-Cola is blended the old-fashioned way. That's right. You hand make it. You really do. And uh, and, and they are different. They taste different. Mm -hmm. And uh, some people say, oh, I like a bottle one better. And they are good. But then when they taste the fountain Coke, I notice they always come back and ask for it. And you can make uh, uh, Cokes, uh, you make cherry Cokes, strawberry Cokes, vanilla Cokes, lemon Cokes, mm -hmm. just whatever the people want. And you also have your ice cream sodas that are very good. Uh, any, you uh, can just make almost anything if, uh, if you've got the syrups. Sure. Are there any other old-timey things we have to try there that are as good as your milkshakes? Well, the, the old-fashioned soda is real good. The uh, banana splits are spectacular. <laughs> 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 you might need a partner on them. <laughs> I don't know. It, it's nice, and it's not. And we have a lot of people that come in Corinth, and, and they come because of the old, not necessarily because of the new. Certainly. And. Uh, they think it's amazing how we've managed to save the downtown, but it took everybody working together. Mm -hmm. And now we've got the, the old, we used to call it the Old South End. It went down and 
we nobody had been able to bring it back up, but now they've got it go up and going now. So basically, the whole town is back to what we might call the old normal. <laughs> That's wonderful. And uh, so it's real good. And uh, uh, we're not we don't stay open on Saturday like we used to. We used to stay open at nine or ten o'clock on Saturday night, but uh, I'm afraid the shopping center's got that. <laughs> okay. Know what somebody said the other day? You were know, trying to think where they were from, Connecticut, I believe. I'm not positive about that, but anyway, he says it's so nice. Says you know somebody stopped and sh showed me how to go. He was trying to find the interpretive center, and he says they, I just couldn't believe they take the time to take him show me. He says I've never seen them before. And says I'll never see them again, but they uh, took the time to show me, and they talked about how nice it was. And it is. It's nice. I think probably small towns and small schools might be nice well, for everybody. It's a slower pace of life. The people here are amazingly nice and outgoing. Uh, they, they are real nice people. And, and uh, uh, not that they're from Mississippi. I just think you will find it throughout the South. Mm -hmm. We go at a slower pace, I think. Friendliness of the people is the uh, first thing we've noticed here. I mean, it's a beautiful place. And, and what I think is amazing is almost always they recognize you from out of town. <laughs> I think that's unusual. <laughs> and, uh, how do they know? <laughs> yeah, how do they know? That, that's really true. I mean, you know, and, and, but they'll know. Sure. What do you think the future of Borums and downtown is? You know, that I really can't say. Uh, I liked it. Mm -hmm. And if you like it, I think that's a good idea. But I never insisted that my children like it. What do you like is what I asked them. Well, one that really surprised me decided to be a constitutional law attorney and later a judge, and I thought for sure they were going to be a doctor. <laughs> 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 and then my next son decided to go into real estate, mm -hmm. and uh, then my youngest son is the one that helps me at the store. And he has a degree in chemistry, but he never did get a pharmacy degree. Okay. And uh, so I don't know. It, it'll be interesting to see. The family stayed pretty much here in northern Mississippi. Yes, and I thought that was an oddity. After the Indians put Miss Borum's scout back on, she refused to go to Texas. And she said it was God's will that they stay in Mississippi. And what, she was a very strong-willed person, too. <laughs> I'm thinking she must have been. Uh, she was. <laughs> but... Uh, it, it's it's uh, amazing when you think about it that uh, how we get to where we are, you know. Sure. And uh, I think about the hardships they went through when they first formed this country. I wonder if our young people have any clue as to how much they did without and how hard it was. I, I doubt it. Can't you just see us in a covered wagon and a cow behind <laughs> <laughs> camping out in the open? And, depending upon what you could kill to eat. I don't know whether we're that strong enough or not. No Facebook? <laughs> no, no Facebook, no phone, <laughs> no radio, <laughs> no television. Dead in a day. <laughs> you know, it's, it, when you think about it, you do wonder sometimes if maybe we haven't gotten a little soft. So you were unusual as a pharmacy student, as a woman. What about as a business person here well, in Mississippi? <laughs> you laugh. I got along fine with the men. It was the women I couldn't get along with. <laughs> I'd say I don't say I couldn't get along with, but mm -hmm. it, it wasn't as easy to be accepted by the women as it was the men. The doctors were fine. Mm -hmm. The other pharmacists were fine. But ironically, I didn't realize the significance of it till I was about my last year in pharmacy school. <laughs> and I think that's funny because today we made such an issue out of it. Sure. And. Uh, of course, uh, Lloyd Garrett's sister was our first uh, woman doctor here in the county, and that was in the early 1900s. That's when a doctor, um, somebody wanted to study medicine, they studied under a doctor. Mm -hmm. And she later became a missionary and left, but she practiced here a good while. We still got some prescriptions that she wrote. You have almost a museum over there. Yeah, it is almost a museum. And, you know, people bring us papers and they want us to put them up, and we do. Mm -hmm. And they please this them, and everybody enjoys looking at them. And sometimes they don't kind of relate to anything, but they like it anyway. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, we have paintings that children have done that we put up there. 
and uh, uh, the children come in and show other children their pictures. <laughs> it's just uh, just a uh, family-oriented store, I think, more than anything else. And does it, from everyone we've talked to, it's sort of the cultural center of the town. Well, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> business center, but... Uh, uh, we, we, uh, we just try to, uh, to fit in the community, and, and if something's needed, we try to help. That's a wonderful success and, uh, story. Uh, we come down at night and fill prescriptions. Uh, our customers have our cell phones, so mm -hmm. if they have a problem, well, they know they can get a hold of somebody. And you we still, may not can solve it, we make them feel better. <laughs> and you still work there every day? Yes, you? we work there. I'm there from 9 to 5. Wow. I remember last night I was there from 9 to 7, but I was supposed to be 5, but we didn't make it. <laughs> That's quite but, a chore. Uh, it is, and uh, uh, but uh, as I said again, if you like something that you do, like you gentlemen like what you do, mm -hmm. it's different. It is. And if you're just kind of mediocre in how you feel, uh, most people don't uh, stay with it very long. Is it the pharmacy or the people you meet that you like the best? Probably a little of both. Mm -hmm. Uh, I've, I've grown up with most of these people. Somebody says, what are you going to do when you come back in afterlife? I says, I guess I'll do the same thing all over again. <laughs> Run a pharmacy. <laughs> so, uh, well, uh, you mentioned you work other places, but how long have you worked continuously at Borms? Well, I graduated in 48, so 48 in 2013 is... Uh, a long time. 60, what, 67? No, no, it, yeah, no, it would be, be 13, what is that? So 68, 85, 13. You probably have seniority. About 68 years, somewhere like that, somebody do the subtracting. <laughs> you have seniority then. I have know. seniority, I definitely do. Oh, that's <laughs> and seniority always has an advantage. <laughs> 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 you, you're going to laugh. I parked out at Kroger the other night, and it was, I was just going to run in and get three cans of cat food. So I parked in the fire lane, don't misunderstand me, And uh, but I wasn't blocking anything and I wasn't going to be in there with just a minute. So I ran in there and got the captain and came back out and asked to the policeman. Uh, and he and I were both surprised. <laughs> 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 he, he said, well, you weren't in there very long, were you? I says, no. And I says, I won't do it again. So he smiled and he helped me. With my trunk, he said my trunk was a disaster, and it was. <laughs> and, but uh, in the city, I guess I would have gotten a ticket. <laughs> Probably so. <laughs> oh, well, I don't know. But it is a great life, and, and I, I think that's what's nice about the United States. You find so many different types of people and mm -hmm. businesses, and everybody kind of operates their own way. and. Now, that's not true of your big organizations, but it is of the small towns, I think. Small business in a small town. And, and two, that's really what made our country great, mm -hmm. was the individuality. Mm -hmm. or at least that's the way I think about it. It seems to be working for you. Yeah, it's worked for me. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> one time, <laughs> we had, Ed Allen was chief of police, and he came in the store. That's when you first had tear gas. And he was going to show the man in the coffee club how the tear gas worked. And he was so excited that we had it, you know. And all of a sudden the canister was dropped. And we liked to never got where we'd go back in the store. <laughs> 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 and the, the funeral parlor that was Mike Peters in, it was uptown. And it came down and tried to help us. <laughs> 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 Mr. Allen took him a long time before the chief would even talk about it. <laughs> But uh, things like that, it's, it's things that you remember, and which makes our country. Sure.